Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan and welcome to the sixth and final in our series of interviews with Dr. Michael Snyder of Stanford University. In this video, Dr. Snyder will talk about the biological age measurement in his research study and also his views on exercise as an important contributor for extending health span. Many of us know exercise is good for you, but do we understand what changes exercise drive at a molecular level? Molecular choreography of acute exercise was a study that was led by Professor Snyder to look at the changes in body chemistry after exercise. The reason that they chose the study was because the system-wide response to acute exercise has not been fully characterized. In the study they looked at the molecular effects when participants were exercising at peak VO2 and recorded the changes of multiple measures including metabolome, lipidome, immunome, proteome and transcriptome before the exercise as a baseline, then 2, 15, 30 and 60 minutes afterwards. Time series analysis revealed thousands of molecular changes and an orchestrated choreography of biological processes involving energy metabolism, oxidative stress, inflammation, tissue repair and growth factor response, as well as regulatory pathways. Here we can see at a high level how some of the key markers change over time. As can be expected, the inflammation and oxidative stress spiked immediately after exercise as the body went into recovery mode. We can also see the glucose metabolism spike a bit later. Although it was not the team's original intent, they noticed some consistencies in the baseline measurements of the participants who performed better on the peak VO2 test. The reason for the correlation is not completely understood, but it does offer the possibility that in the future it will lead to a cheaper and more convenient way for people to objectively measure their aerobic fitness. And with that, let me start the interview. So you, you said biological age against chrono, chronological age. So what, what did you use to measure the biological age? Was that DNA? Well, that age? comes out of this, uh, the markers we have that okay. suggest. So if you know people's, um, yeah, so you can see where they sit relative to the norm and their, and their patterns. So are, is their slope higher right. than their actual age? Are they sitting above the curve? Are there are there markers suggestive that they're older than they really are? And a good example is that it turns out that people who are on AIDS drugs, so people with AIDS who are on drugs, or people with cancer who have been treated with usually chemotherapy, this is known from methylation studies that their, their biological age has jumped up. They're, they're much older. It's as though that those chemical treatments have actually you know, uh, shifted their age to make them older than their actual chronological age, if that makes sense. So you can yeah. follow, if you know what the normal pattern is, you can see where you sit relative to normal. And then you right. can also follow the trend. So that's how we deduce it for ours as well. We discover these new markers that say, well, this, this is an indicator of age, and this is where, you know, you sit relative to the group. You're, you're in a <laughs> biologically older group. So, right, so so it's kind of like your own, your own bi biological age rather than using it is, the Horvath's yeah. clock or something right. like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, even for the Horvath clock, you can tell whether your biological age is older than your chronological age, knowing yeah. what the population group is as a whole. But I think the most yeah. important thing is to see what your trend is. <laughs> is it going up or is is the slope going up really high? Yeah. And I was very disappointed, as, as you know, I measure me on all these things. So I was so sure I'd have a, uh, you know, a much younger biological age and the slope would be heading not so steep. And, uh, but nope, I'm spat, spot on for my, my biological age matches my chronological one. and the Slope is the exact same too. So I've got to figure out how to reverse that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, so one final question, uh, if I may. So, if um, if you're going to advise people, like something that they could do today, like one thing they could do today that would kind of improve their health span, their, their health, what would you suggest, or maybe something that they could measure, or some activity they could do? Yeah. 
Well, from the health standpoint, uh, the, from a measurement standpoint, the, it would be a smartwatch that is following your physiology. Because I do think it can tell you whether you're getting sick or not. And I think you can follow your trends over time. So that would be one simple thing. If you had more money, I'd say add on the whole body MRI and uh, ge genome sequence for sure can tell you what your risk for. Again, all these things do have value. So uh, whole body MRI right now is pretty pricey. So probably a smartwatch would be, for, if you're on low budget, smartwatch mm -hmm. plus your genome sequence maybe for that next thing. Right. But they, they all do contribute, don't get me wrong. Every one of these measurements contributes. As far as action, what should be the number one thing you do? Well, I'm a big believer exercise is number one for health. There's a ton of studies out there that show uh, exercise is really, really important for your health. Uh, some people argue food is number one. I, I think food is number two, mm -hmm. <laughs> the kind of food you eat. Within reason, obviously, eating a terrible diet is probably could make that <laughs> yeah. the first thing to change. But um, Anyway, but there's often a fallacy out there. There's, uh, I've just seen some, read some interesting studies about aging and exercise. There's a tendency, it's very, very clear, first of all, people who exercise a lot will live much, much longer. It's one of the best predictors, or it correlates with something called VO2 max, which is a measure of fitness, which in turn uh, is correlated with lifespan. So exercise really does correlate. But it's often the case that people get old, they worry, well, maybe, you know, take it easy. You, you're very frail uh, if you hurt yourself, you know. But that actually is probably the worst advice. I think you want them to actually keep moving more as people get older. You don't want them to fall or break anything, but you want to keep moving, people moving. There's a lot of studies out there now that say people who are older actually can benefit the most by exercise. So actually, uh, uh, it, not, not, not extreme exercise, but just you know, moderate sort of routine exercise could really is a very powerful for lifespan. Right, yes, absolutely agree with that. Um, so can you tell people where they can find out more about your, your work and your lab? Yeah, so you can visit our lab website. It's um, just search Snyder Lab, you'll find mm -hmm. it. That's probably the easiest way. You can uh, also enroll in our COVID-19 study if you want to participate in that from the wearable standpoint. That's uh, stanford.innovation.edu. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but you can probably get there through our website as well. I think those are some of the easiest ways to learn more about our work. Love to have you. We have all kinds of studies going on in the area of diabetes and continuous glucose monitoring. Uh, I mentioned the infectious disease, COVID-1. So we have quite a few fun studies out there. So love to have people enroll if they're so inclined. That sounds interesting. Is that kind of US only or do you have any international components? Well, some of the things, COVID-19, that goes from anywhere around the world. So that one can be done. I think the continuous glucose monitoring, we're going to spread out a little broader. So we have a way of running that uh, broader, we think. Uh, some of the one, like the very deep profiling we do on people because of all the sample preparation that's best done if you live in the Bay Area. But you can still sign up if you want, if you live in the Bay Area. Okay, excellent. So thank you very much for your time. That was uh, wonderful. And I uh, hope that we can speak again. Yeah, thanks. For thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Dr. Snyder's lab has been running studies on precision health which focuses on predicting, preventing, and curing disease precisely based on individual data. We are happy to see this shift for a more proactive and personalized care, which empowers people to lead healthier lives. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.